In this video, we're going to walk through how to set up a process flow type visualization with a hierarchical structure. Now, process flows use links to both be able to move forward between stages, but sometimes downwards or backwards as well between any of the nodes within the hierarchy. This will also showcase how to leverage custom icons and also special group IDs as well, as you can see here at the top, indicated by client, sales, contracts, construction, and handover. Let's go ahead and start the demo by coming over to an unstructured visual that hasn't been set up yet. Now the fields that we have in here, like other ones, include both the child or the node ID and the parent ID. However, we have some additional ones down here at the bottom for group and resident ID and the formatting columns as well. Let's start the process by coming up to the map fields section and we're gonna close down the node detail and we're gonna open up others, which has a group ID as well. So we're gonna take the group ID, place it in here. Group color goes into this well. The subtree ID will be the resident ID. For further context, the group ID column is used for the ID of the group in the group identifier row, where the subtree ID is required only for the first node of a flow. Child nodes reside in the group of the parent node. Further information on this can be found on the XViz documentation pages. And then additionally, we're gonna to come to appearance, open that up, and notice that we have a node icon and label. So we're gonna take the icon, place it in the icon well, Icon label goes in the labels well here. This is also a good spot to mention that the icon column can have publicly accessible HTTPS or base64 URLs, and that the label is what will be used in the legend of the icons. And then scrolling up, we have node color, which gets placed in here as well. So closing out of all of these, clicking submit, and we can now observe the structure of this starting to be built out where they're now sectioned off by each of the stages of this pipeline process. Now let's do a little bit of additional formatting. We're gonna come up to the template options here. Let's go ahead and change this to basic to put the value below it. And with that value now showing at the bottom of each of the cards, we're then gonna come up to display, go over to number, change the decimal places to zero, and add a prefix of number of projects, which will then relabel the project count at the bottom to be more concise. Now that we're done with that, we can start the process to set up our links. So if that is not included with your data set, you have an option to come up to links, select add a link. And as an example, submit to PO has the ability to go from here to charge of costings. Observe now up in the legend where we have a new item for connector item one, which we will rename later. But we also know that swim links can come over from the submit PO and it can skip that process to immediately going in to a contact review. And each one of these in turn can be customized. So if I wanted this to be a different color, I'll go ahead and make this one yellow. Let's go ahead and add one more in the other direction. I will come up to select add link and I'm gonna click return file to contractor, which I know can sometimes go backwards into the completion date delayed and color this one a color of red. And last but not least with any of these links, you can also come to the manage links option, come up to add new, and then you're given an editor to select the from and to. And if you open this up, you're also given a search box for all of the fields to be able to find that item to be able to connect the two of them between. Closing out of this menu, a couple of things left to discuss as well is the connectors can be given custom names. So as you continue to add these connectors, if you need to edit any of them, you have the option down here to edit the icon names that are coming from the model. But these new connector items, we can also give a unique name as well for each of the items between any of these process flows. And you might have noticed in the legend itself, on top of the connectors and icons, we automatically have KPI colors that are indicating any of the values between the zero to 10, 10 to 30, and 30 to 100% range that can be found up in the conditional formatting section. We have the KPI here that's already been created where we could edit the rule range if we wanted to. But additionally, we have an option to create our own conditional formatting with any rule sets based off of rules or color scales, and then a set of rules that can be applied to any of the sides or a specific side or any of the color impact, which can be based off of everything the border, the node, or the font. So a lot of flexibility in creating your own conditional formatting and color-coded KPIs for the report. And last but not least, the KPIs as well can be turned on or off as needed. So depending on what you would like to show below the card and whatever data you're including into here can also be indicated in here as well. Currently we're showing number of projects, but that could be the sales amount or anything else coming from your data set. Finalizing the demo with the completed swim lanes created, one other thing to note is that as long as the swim lines have the same line design and color, they'll automatically be grouped to the same items in the legend itself. So we have all the green coded ones that are labeled as on track and we coded all of the red ones as well to be rejected and or delayed, which again can be found and edited in the legend editor up here using the pencil edit icon.